should, shoulding and have to, it's actually a part that I write in the book. And it's when someone says you should, or someone says you have to, as a human response, we'll say no. And we'll automatically put up a blockade, a defense, because we don't want to be told what to do. Yet the shoulds we put in our own head, I should do this because that's the part that takes away, do I really want to do this? Perfect. Imagine being a little kid skiing with that giant jacket that was four sizes too big for him or her. Or on the opposite, imagine being an adult wearing a kid size jacket. You just felt like you had this, I felt like I had this skin on, this body, this environment around me that I didn't know, it didn't fit right. It didn't feel right. And that's how I felt in myself for a, a very long time. And sometimes you look for that. You want people to, you do what you don't. And it's this really twisted mindset. You're calling for help, mm -hmm. no matter what disorder you have, psychological disorder, because it's a mental issue. You're calling for help. If you're someone who is, you know, even an even an alcoholic, even someone who is a cutter, even someone with an eating disorder, any one of the addictions, you're calling for help in an outside way that you don't know how to voice. So that's what a lot of people use alcohol for today too, mm -hmm. or any addiction or any kind of, um, I'll say drug, but when I say drug, I use it loosely. It's the same, having three drinks just to forget your day is the same as going on Facebook for an hour and zoning out. Uh, you doing checkouts, like different ways to check out of your own life because you don't want to think, you don't want to feel, you don't want to deal. That's really what alcohol did for me. Whenever you want to make change, it's really important to know the why. And I really emphasize that to people that I'm either coaching or speaking, know your why, and then you can start to build new foundations and building blocks. If you know why you're doing something, if you know why you want to change, then you're going to keep reaching for that why you want to change and rebuild the why you're doing it. And in that moment, the pediatrician called up to Yale New Haven Hospital and got me an appointment to get a CAT scan of, and, uh, and later a biopsy. But it was to get it checked out. And I'm like, okay, what, what's going on here? And she's like, you just need to go there right away. And I'm like, you want to tell me anything? And of course, as doctors, I can't tell you anything because it's liability here in the U.S. So that's when I found out what this lump was. And it was being diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma two weeks later. And that's probably what I tried to portray on the outside. Deep down, I knew something was wrong. I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if it's your body, you know, in your body, something's not right. How I always tried to portray to the outside world is that everything is fine. And that's... Mm -hmm. Part of what I developed with an eating disorder is I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm okay. But it's deep down, stuff isn't okay. So you start to, once again, develop that distance between mind and body even further. The chemotherapy, I, I hated. I hated, I was fearful every day about if my hair was going to fall out. Mm -hmm. As a female, you really identify, and even males, and you identify with how you look. If you're already self-conscious about how you look and you don't like how your body is, and then, oh yeah, we're going to make your hair fall out. It doubles the, I really don't like myself. Um, the mind has a really powerful capability. My mind has always been, I mean, all of our minds are super strong. The mind can override anything else within the body and our human capacity. Um, but at, my mind really just overrode everything. And it was like, what do I want? How do I want to be? And coming back to that idea that I was, I can be, and I was a chameleon. So the face that I was there was very different than the face I was when I was by myself. After when you're given a second chance in life, I felt this big pressure that I had to be incredible. I always put that pressure on myself ever since I was young to overachieve, to be a plus student. It was, it was never my parents. It was always me. Um, and even after cancer, I felt this double pressure that you are a lucky one and now you need to go out and do something awesome. But I still, when you don't learn the foundation, you will fall right back into old habits. And that's exactly what I did. You got to put the work in. You got to keep going back to try. 
And I think those are the best lessons of life that you get from yoga, that it's not going to be easy. And mm. there are going to be days where you are more flexible than others. There's certain times of the day that you're more flexible than mm. others. You wake up and you try and touch your hamstring, your, your toes, your hamstrings are going to scream at you no matter what age you are. Life. We do so many things every day to fuck our bodies up. You know, mm. we're, we're seated for hours. Uh, we're, you know, crouched over, poor posture, in a chair, in a car. We're hunched over. We have a bag on one shoulder. But what are we doing to undo that? Uh, Self-awareness to say, how am I approaching this? Okay, if you're, if you're jealous of somebody, it means you want to do something too. Mm. Um, so that's, you know, working together, it's, we have those fun moments and we have those stupid laughter. We have those fights. Uh, but now it's learning better methods, habits to go above and beyond that. So it's, we have our separate workspaces. Um, time where we're doing our different projects but at the end of the day it's sharing and really creating a positive nice. message waking at dawn packing the